In this video, we'll cover the Corelight Entity Collection, its underlying packages, and the increased visibility this detection set provides Corelight users. Corelight defines an entity as any enterprise network element, such as a system, server, user, domain, or certificate. And the Entity Collection provides valuable insight into these elements through succinct summaries of information which are normally handcrafted by security teams for threat hunting and incident response. This insight allows the security team to quickly answer questions similar to the following. What usernames has this IP address used for login? What else happened during this time frame? Which hosts have used SSH in the last 24 hours? The entity collection is comprised of three packages, the known entities package, application identification package, and the local subnets package. The known entities package includes information about everything on your networks, which means it covers anything from typical IT assets, such as laptops, desktops, servers, printers, etc., to ICS and OT devices, like building automation, cameras, and other control network devices, and can help refine or update existing configuration management database systems, plus provide additional attributes about those assets on the network. These attributes are available in a set of interlinked logs that are summarized on 15 minute intervals from the full Corelight log streams for fast searching by incorporating all of that telemetry together in a more compact form. As stated, each log aggregates and summarizes data from multiple other sources and ties them together by a new KUID field, which is short for known unique identifiers. There is also an option to display the last active session's KUID giving the ability to create a chain of referential information about a particular entity. Easily identifying the software applications running on a network provides helpful context to security analysts. Through the use of various techniques from DNS queries to certificate server name indication to protocol metadata, Corelight currently categorizes over 150 types of applications. A new field is written directly to the connection log for identified applications for easy correlation and they're also fed into the known entity logs for further visibility. As stated in Corelight's Entity Collection white paper, many of Corelight's detections and data generation capabilities are driven by understanding the local network subnets. It's imperative to know what is classified as internal traffic versus external. Otherwise, it can be difficult to trigger the appropriate alert or provide context for an investigation. We at Corelight realize that accurately defining all of the appropriate networks within an enterprise environment can prove to be a Herculean effort. And this is where the power of the Entity Collection's new local subnets package is extremely beneficial. It uses sophisticated algorithms to determine what local subnets have been seen and then generates a summary via notice that can be used to configure the local network settings on a Corelight sensor or to identify any potentially overlooked networks in use in your environment. Let's take a quick look at what's available in the Entities Collection via our Splunk dashboard. The Names panel shows all hostname to IP address relationships based off of the application layer protocol identified in the traffic stream. This allows us to quickly match hostnames with IP addresses across our environment. As a simple example, if we wanted to identify all devices with a hostname including the word Pixel, in our logs, that's a quick and easy query using the known names information. The same can be said about our users. If we wanted to identify which usernames were gleaned from network traffic by specific protocol or username, that's one quick selection or search away from identification. With the information available from our Corelight known host log, we can sort by the number of connections opened by IP, sort by long enduring connections, or query for specific IPs as well. Moving down to the Known Services panel, we can sift through all services seen on our network or select a specific service, and it not only returns the associated IP address based on the selected service, but we also get the listening network port, layer four protocol, number of connections, application, and software if those are identified during the network conversation. While remote entities logs are typically disabled by default due to their frequency and external focus, I've enabled them here to highlight the visible connections from remote addresses and the associated country of origin. One application of this information is to validate perimeter rules put in place to either allow or block specific network ranges. 
So if we wanted to say, show me all network traffic that's coming remotely from the Netherlands based on geo IP data, we can select that and see it here, not only with the host IP and country, but also total connections, average duration, and maximum duration. We can also provide negation. So if I wanted to omit the United States in my logs for remote entities, I could just select the not country field and it would show me everything that was not the United States so I can see which other countries of origin are communicating with my service. The devices panel gives us visibility into IP address, MAC address relationships, and can even identify the network card vendor by the first three bytes of the MAC address, known as the OUI. This is valuable information to highlight host MAC associations for network access control, misconfigured DHCP services, or even rogue device detection. And finally, there's the X509 certificate information identified in the known certificates log. This not only gives insight into the certificate subject and issuer, but also highlights the IP address and network port on which this exchange happened. This allows analysts to easily determine if there are any deviation from what's expected in their environment. In addition to our previous demonstration, we can also use the entities collection to highlight devices on our network. The number of those devices, the number of Mac vendors, say we do one initial purchase or large purchases of the same vendor, but we're starting to see a deviation from that number, the unique devices by that Mac vendor, the relative connection volumes over time per Mac vendor, the rarity of Mac vendors, data sources over time, and unique IPs associated to devices. And another use case is to leverage link analysis to be able to understand more about the relationships within our data using the entity collection so that we can easily and quickly identify certain assets based on various attributes, such as a hostname, IP, MAC, and vendor MAC relationship to see which devices and assets are out there on our network and to get a holistic overview of what those may be. Thank you for watching. If you'd like additional information about the Corelight Entity Collection, please see the associated blog post, white paper, or visit Coralite.com to talk to an expert.